Oh, hello, Jake. <laughs> oh, we're starting. No warning. <laughs> so, Jake and I have been uh, programming phase four for the HWPO program. And to give you guys a little insight, this is the chaos. Like, it's just scribbled notepads all over the place. Of, And, like, this is what I give Jake for notes. And then he does... I'm a translator. Data entry. Is it data or data? I say data. Yeah, I say data. If you In, say unless I'm wearing glasses, then I say data. Yeah. Data. Yeah. yeah. If you want to sound more intelligent, if you want to switch from pointing to your head of like it it's data to it's data. And then Sammy's just working. Crushing it. Crushing it. Been in that seat since seven in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> the Sam and I are up at 540. That's true. Tyler and I get our pump on from 6 until 730. And then Tyler goes to work. I'm young I need my sleep. And then Jake just hangs out no. sleeping. No, I'm hanging out at 7. Let's, and I mean, Jake is a full on toddler. He sleeps in bunk beds. You made them. Because <laughs> they're awesome. <laughs> we didn't document that. But we wanted queen size bunk beds up and for the top and bottom for, for our guest bedroom because we need place for people to sleep. And it was with the intent of people like Marston and Heber where like they're comfortable sleeping in the same room, um, but we just need more beds and we don't have enough space. Sammy got a quote, the cheapest twin queen bunk beds was like 2,500 bucks. And I was like, no way. I went to my barn uh, and like two years ago, I bought stacks of lumber because I was doing projects. I hated running back and forth to the store. And so I just bought like a pallet of two by sixes, a pallet of two by fours. And this is what we pieced together. So we got a queen performer sleep up top, a queen performer sleep down below. And then we got these cool floating stairs to walk up. So definitely not child safe. We don't have a railing over here and we don't have a handrail coming down, but no railing. I mean, we put a railing over here. So like if you toss in your sleep, you don't fall off. But Jake, do you sleep up top or down below? I alternate nights. <laughs> Look at that. Solid construction. I dropped something behind it yesterday and like tried to do the push the bed away from the wall while you're on it. And I had a like full deadlift set up and yank it out. <laughs> but like, the slats underneath, that's a siding off my barn because that's just what was laying around. So I was like, eh, maybe it'll work. And then also, at my barn, I had my college diplomas. Those were in the barn? I got two of them. <laughs> yeah, no big deal. <laughs> Haven't used either one of them a day in my life. We've been doing programming all morning. We've been literally sitting on this counter, working shoulder to shoulder. That's how, that's how, that's how buds do it. So we're taking a quick break. We, we need to finish up this programming because I'm leaving tomorrow. Um, so we're gonna go hit uh, an HWPO 60 in, out of the gym, it's 60 minutes, and it's still a killer workout. So we're going to get that all lined up, figure out what equipment we need. I was gonna say we need some afternoon espresso, but we have Fuse down in the gym and we got a case of water down there too. So bring a shaker, we're gonna get changed, and then we're gonna get after it. Woo! Let's hit it. That was our last work break. Went plinking some 22. Why'd you shut the door, my dude? Because I wanted to open it for <laughs> cinematic effect. And I didn't pick up my equipment from this morning. See, I always use picking up my equipment from my last session as my warm up for my next session. Okay. Like he does two sessions a day. Am I the only one that does that? Yeah, I do two sessions a day. I'm trying to get jacked, bro. Jake, before any workout, what do we do? Load up on caffeine. I'm not even, I like caffeine, but I like beta more. Is, it, is this the sour watermelon? This is true, this is. Yeah, do you want peach mango or sour, sour watermelon? Sa sour watermelon, dude. Oh, you like how you didn't have to dig for that scoop? I do. I wish my hands were longer to get deeper. Mm. Just one? <laughs> yeah, just one. 
I like getting hype, but that's just dangerous. And the fact that I already had some fuse this morning at six. I have had two espresso double shots and two cups of coffee. I like to party. <laughs> Woo! All right, warm up. I'm gonna get judged so hard off my handwriting. Power clean plus power jerk. And of course, because we have a rest day tomorrow, that means Imam today. All right, so for today's workout, uh, warm up is five minutes. We got one minute on the fan bike, just nice casual pace. Then we got a uh, single arm deadlift, so like suitcase deadlifts, 10 on each side, eight goblet squat, squats, five strict pull-ups, and then intervals every 90 seconds, uh, three power cleans, one power jerk at 65%. So uh, we're just gonna do 225 every two minutes, 10 rounds, or sorry, every two minutes for 10 minutes. Deadlifts, uh, relatively high reps, so we're starting at sets of like 15, so they're gonna be more of an endurance, and then up at the top, we're getting cut it back, still sets of six, but 325. And then we have our 24 minute EMOM. So these are scaled based off your own personal fitness, but we're hitting echo bike, burpee box jump overs, row, double under. So Jake and I will start staggered, so we're not on the same stations, um, and we can just go rotate through six rounds. And this is early stages of HWPO60. Um, so as you can see, HWPO60 is not like HWPO light. It's just all the stuff that is the most bang for the buck. Um, and then it's all on time intervals to make sure that you're held accountable. So if you're working out by yourself, you're not twiddling on your phone. It's like you set the clock, it beeps every 90 seconds, every two minute, every minute on the minute. Um, and you can just hammer through the stuff. It's a good amount of volume. I think working sets here, I think we, so we got 10, 15, 22 and a half plus 24. So what is that 46 and a half minutes? So, I mean, this, we don't need to warm up for this. will take a couple minutes to warm up for this. will take a couple minutes to set up for, but it's intended that like your early on sets are your activation, your warm up. The warm ups are meant to activate the proper muscle groups for these and then the EMOMs, you can kind of jump in, hit the first round a little bit slower, low intensity, use that as your warm up, and then hit it full throttle. But I mean, we're working the better part of an hour of actual work. So we're gonna set the clock, get moving, and be out of the gym in under an hour with an awesome workout. So we wanna get a time lapse of our whole workout start to finish. So we're just taping Jake's phone onto the Stairmaster. Remember that degree you saw at the beginning of the video? <laughs> He's using it. The right size for my stubby legs. So normally we would set, set the clock for each thing so it beeped every interval, but we want to keep it running start to finish so you guys see, you know, what our actual true finish time was. So we're going to start it, get going. 10 seconds. All right, warm ups are done. Jake's getting ready to go. So these power clean and power jerks are three power cleans, no touch and go into one power jerk. Uh, we're using 225, but because there's two of us, we only want to set up one bar. So Jake's going to do all three power cleans and a power jerk, and then I'm just going to jump in right after, and we'll go waterfall style but every 90 seconds uh, for five rounds. Here we go. So both of us just got through that interval, I think in about 40 seconds. So good amount of rest before jumping into the next set. Lawn chairs, <laughs> chair side table. So Jake, on that warm up, in my warm up videos, I always say, Start out nice and easy on the machine, increase the intensity as you go. What is your hold on the bike? I went 70, 75, and then the last time we were on the bike only for 30 seconds, so I did 80. What type of psycho looks at RPM? I, I always look at wattage. First round I was high 300s, second round I was right at 
450 watts. And the last round I kicked it up over 500 because we only had 30 seconds left. What's normal for tracking output on bikes? Is it, is it RPM or wattage? Uh, Jumping into our last set of power cleans at the 15 minute mark. Jake takes about 15 seconds. I take about 15 seconds. Then on to the deadlifts. Set of deadlifts is a set of 15. Super light. It's a big set on the deadlifts, especially when you're doing them controlled, not trying to bounce them too much. Get a good burn. All right, Jake's got two sets, the final weight, but I am sweating. So we getting some hydro. Let's go peach mango, you know? Who didn't put the scoop back on the hanger? Oh, Tyler, bring someone into your life, you love them unconditionally, and then they don't put the scoop back on the hanger? Bam. I almost just threw the scoop back in the bucket. <laughs> all right, we all done deadlifting? Got a nice little pile of sweat. I am super sweaty. But we finished right around the 25 minute mark. The weight isn't crazy. The intensity is made up for it just by the volume, like the number of reps per set, and just the fact that it's intervals. It is not hot in here today. I think it's 63 degrees in the gym. So this is just sweaty from working. So. I'm gonna clean up our deadlift bar, get the EMOM set up. Uh, Jake and I will start stagger, so I'll probably start on the echo bike, he'll start on the row, and then we'll just cycle through for six rounds, 24 minutes total. Let's get after it. All right, we're all set up. We're gonna do 14 cal row. That's meant to take, uh, the row is meant to take 40 to 45 seconds. Uh, we're looking at about our 2K effort, probably a second or two slower than 2K effort. Obviously, if you're doing calories, you don't see your split time, you see calories per hour, but you know the stimulus of a 2K row. Echo bike, uh, we're doing 12 calories. If you're on the assault bike, uh, probably do 14 calories, but echo bike uh, is just the fans a lot bigger, um, so it doesn't click over calories quite as much. But I know like, if you're doing it on an assault bike, you can sprint those calories, get them done like eight seconds. That's not the point. The point is not to be anaerobic and have it be just a max effort sprint. The point is to make it last, you know, 35, 45 seconds, get yourself out of breath, get your legs puffy. Then we got 60 double unders. That's gonna be like the recovery station. Try to relax, I'm gonna be tripping like crazy. So I'll be my frustration station. And then we got 10 burpees. Uh, just try to keep the cycle rate quick. Uh, stay low on the box, no, vertical oscillation on top of the box try to keep your hips at the same height all the way over and also i don't know jacob we've never introduced you jake's one of our coaches I'm around been around <laughs> if you're out of the games if you've done any of the community workouts you've gotten to meet jake uh he's the like my guinea pig a lot of the times so, like i'll test a workout but then i want a second opinion on something he'll run through it uh we just bounce ideas together uh but stud of an athlete, hell of a programmer, and just a, just a good dude. So we're gonna get started on this EMOM in one minute, and we're gonna get after it. We're gonna get even more sweaty. Better hurry up, Jake, we got 15 seconds. Three, two, one, go. Uh, Jake, we're halfway through. How you feeling? Good, man. What are you right. holding on the row? Holding like 16, 1650. Sick. 
The second last round is always the hardest. Last round, light at the end of the tunnel is right in reach. Second to last. It's the one that hurts the most. It's mentally the toughest. Make yourself proud. I've gone unbroken on my double under so far. Let's see if I can make it. All done. It is steamy in here. My shirt is soaked through. And we got two minutes left to spare. And we took a big break in the middle. We did take our time setting up for the Imam. Everything else I feel like was casual pace. Yep. Did the warm up five minutes. Took about five minutes to set up for the power cleans. Set up and warm up for the power cleans. Hit that in seven and a half minutes. You're able to go right in the deadlifts because the power clean weight ends Pretty much at the good. start of the deadlift weight just about. So you can jump right into that for 10 minutes, five rounds every two minutes. And then we took a couple minutes to set up for the EMOM, 24 minutes. That brought us right to 58 total minutes. We took our time setting up. Jake had to run upstairs and grab his RPM jump rope. It's a special rope. Mine, I just run an RX Smart Gear. I'm sure it's a couple years old at this point, but she works. She's got a fast cable, good bearings. Gold handles. Gold handles, yeah, they sent me that one. But. How did the bike go for you? What'd you hold? What'd you hold on the bike? I was a little too fast every time. I held like 80 to 82. Yeah, I think it's an important distinction. So, in the videos for HWPO flagship, we go through uh, strategy, pacing, scaling for everything. And so, with these, it's intended the bike is supposed to be at about your mile, your mile pace, your mile intensity. And it's supposed to last about 40 seconds. We did 12 calories on the Echo Bike. I think that was, it was too low for both of we us. We should have done more. Because when I was holding over 500 watts, I was getting done in 30 seconds. Yeah. So, should have added a couple more calories. But I just wanted to do it as prescribed to show you guys the flow of the workout. Burpee box jump overs. I kept the same speed, ended every round right at the 30 second mark. Uh, but those like the whole point of these EMOMs is a cardio movement. So a machine just gets you winded out of breath and then into a movement that requires efficiency, technique, speed, cadence, all that stuff. So it's just getting winded, practicing a movement, getting winded, practicing a movement. So the burpees, they're not intended to be hard. You're supposed to have a good amount of rest there. So 10 reps for each of us. We're, I think we're both finishing right at the 30 minute yeah. mark or 30 second mark. 27 to 30 seconds every time. Um, but you know, by the end, you start feeling the fatigue in your chest. You start feeling the fatigue in your hips, the explosive with your quads jumping up on top of the box. But you have to start thinking about controlling your breathing. Yeah. You're trying to keep your output the same. So you're trying to end every round the same. So that might mean as you move through the rounds, you need to ramp up your intensity. Then on the row, uh, the row was okay for me. I could have added on another calorie or two because I think I was ending a little bit fast, uh, but I was holding I never dip below 1500, like first pull, I was getting it up to 1500. Then I was touching between 1500, 1600. Um, and I wasn't killing myself. I was intentionally slowing it down a tiny bit. It's not like I would have been rowing 2000, but I was slowing it down a tiny bit to make it last a little bit longer. Uh, just so I would get a little bit more winded, a little bit more time under, under tension. Um, so a little bit slower than my 2k pace, but same, same end point, same time domain, every single round. And then going, getting winded on the rower, going to double unders, uh, and just like getting fatigued, getting your heart rate up, and then going to a very, very high skill. Not, not that it's high skill, but it's very, very detail oriented. Yeah, as the program goes on, they get a little bit yeah. higher skill. Um, but yeah, it's like just type of thing. Like the difference on double unders, like if you're able to relax your shoulders, keep your hands in front of your hips, versus you're tensing up a little bit, you pull with your traps and your shoulders pull back one inch. Now you're gonna be catching your toes. So that's what I mean by high school. It's very detail oriented, but just keep it a nice steady cadence. We're not trying to rush. We're not trying to go super slow. 
I'm trying to practice our regular cadence on the double unders, get our heart rate down and just get through unbroken. Um, and I managed to get through all of them unbroken, which I was pretty pleased with. Did you get them all unbroken? Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. RPM. Boy, RX mark here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that was our day of training. We're probably gonna go finish up some programming. I don't know, maybe we should go see if the track's dry. Go rip some pit bikes real quick. We should do that in the program. Yeah, all right, we'll go rip pit bikes. Might be, it's so slick. The stock tires on the pit bike are They're trash. Ice skates. They're so bad. If the, if the soil is the slightest bit wet, you just slip out. Tyler pulled his groin a couple weeks ago because he slid out and he tried to put his inside foot down and just whoosh. But Michelin reached out and Michelin sent six new tires. Uh, so hopefully they're a little bit, a little bit knobby or a little bit better in the mud. Um, now we just gotta find- We're cool. also really heavy for those bikes. No, we're not over. too heavy. We don't have a lot of tread for us. <laughs> Someone sent me the other day that you can buy the snowmobile track. For a pit bike? For pit bikes. Yeah. It snows a lot here. Yeah. And I have a track. It's about to start snowing in like in the next month or two. Yeah. That would be sick. Yeah. So I need to find, I know they make them for dirt bikes and the kid in the picture on the website was on a CRF 110. So if Feels you like know someone, out. if you know someone, let me know. <laughs> oh, there you are, beautifuls. How's you doing? So 16 was my bike, but number 13 here, this is Slam Pig. This is the experimental one. This is the one that we did first and it has the stiffest spring. So it rides nice. Jake, you need to put on a helmet, otherwise the internet gets mad. What is this? Uh, you gave me that bicycle helmet. No, that's Kip's helmet for when he rides. There's your helmet. Be safe. Better take the hair down. Look at the flip flops. You're wearing flip flops too. <laughs> Hit a boy. Were, were flip flops a good choice? Terrible choice. <laughs> I haven't stepped in mud, but my feet are real mud covered. You almost just pulled your groin. <laughs> All right, let's end it. Thank you guys for joining in for the day. Uh, you get a little insight into how we program, what HWP 060 looks like. If you're interested or if you wanna give it a try, you can try that day of programming or you can head over to hybrid performance method, um, HWPO, uh, we have regular HWPO, HWPO 60, HWPO Pro coming soon. Uh, but thanks for coming along with the pit bikes and we'll see you next time.